So the i5 12400F launched almost four years ago, but does its six Golden Cove P cores with 12 threads hold up in 2025? And how does it stack up against AMD's Zen 5 base 9600X with the same six cores? We're going to look at several benchmarks. On top of that, we'll test seven games at 1080p with an RTX 4070. And we'll be testing on 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 mega transfers seal 30 with a Z790 P Wi-Fi for Intel and an X670 EF for AMD. And this this video is going to be mostly useful for people considering upgrading from their existing DDR5 LJ1700. There is a little bit of a difference with DDR4, but this video is mostly focused on a like for like comparison between these two CPUs with that aforementioned 32GB 6000 CO30 RAM. So the 12400F launched on the 4th of Jan 2022 and as mentioned before has 6 Golden Cove P cores with 12 threads. Power limits are 65 watts of PL1 and 117 watts of PL2 although we are going to unlock this in the BIOS. The base clock is 2.5 GHz and boost is 4.4 and it's based on Intel's 10 nanometer ESF or Enhanced Super Thin Process Node, otherwise known as Intel 7. It has 80 kilobytes of L1 cache per core and 1.25 megabytes of L2 cache per core. There's also 18 megabytes of shared L3 cache. And for current pricing, you're looking at around 116 bucks US. The 9600X launched on August 8th of 2024 and has of course 6 Zen 5 cores with 12 threads. AMD lists a TDP of 65 watts, but can of course be extended to 105 watts in the BIOS, which we are also going to do in this video. The base clock is 3.9 GHz and boosts all the way up to 5.4 GHz. The CCD is based on TSMC's 4NP node, whilst IO die uses their older 6 nanometer process. It's got 80 kilobytes of L1 cache per core, much like the 12400F, but has slightly lower L2 cache at 1 megabyte per core, although you get a much more generous 32 megabytes of shared L3 cache, and current pricing is anywhere from $196 US, so a little bit more expensive by upwards of 70%, so that is something to keep in mind. Jumping straight into benchmarks, and we see that AMD excels in Premiere Pro by 19%, benefiting from Zen 5's higher IPC and clock speeds. After Effects is 38% faster in AMD, just a far better latency in IPC, and AMD's superior single threading on top of its faster and higher L3 cache shines in Photoshop by 44%. In spec workstation, AMD is 29% faster in 7-zip, benefiting from Zen 5's faster raw integer of throughput and memory bandwidth, and 25% faster in data science, which involves matrix operations and analytics kernels, all of which thrive on AMD's superior floating point performance and memory latency on top of superior IPC. It's also 46% faster in LLVM clan code compilation, making use of branch prediction and cache and parallel threading, so Ryzen's faster clocks and architectural efficiency make light work of this task. The classic Cinebench R23 multi-threading is 43% faster with the 9600X, combining advantages with higher IPC, clock speed and raw memory bandwidth, and also throughput efficiency on top of latency advantages. Single core is 28% faster, which clearly shows in black and white the IPC advantage with AMD here. And transcoding a video with Handbrake from H264 to H265, with one of my videos of 4K 29.97 FPS, took 32% less time on the 9600X, which is almost 11 and a half minutes faster, meaning IPC, clocks and cache advantages are on full display here, on top of AVX and floating point advantages. On top of V-Ray Benchmark 6, which is mostly a ray tracing renderer, AMD is 56% faster, benefiting from the larger and faster L3 cache yet again, since the ray tracing spawns millions of parallel calculations. Quickly with PC Mark 10, AMD is 22% faster in content creation and 15% faster in essentials which covers app startup, video conferencing and also web browsing. And on top of that is 36% faster in productivity which covers spreadsheets and documents. Lastly is a good old blender render and in BMW 2.7 the 9600X is 32% faster and in classroom is around the same at around 33% faster. Overall the same improvements to IP PC, clock and general throughput on top of bandwidth improves over the 12400F despite both of these only being 6 core products. So overall the 9600X delivers anywhere from 30 to 40% higher performance across all of our benchmarks here. But as we mentioned it's also 70% more expensive and once you factor in a new AM5 board value quickly diminishes. Of course you could still resell your LGA1700 board and reuse that DDR5 like I mentioned. 
but at that point you gotta consider resale offsets, which means you could end up spending more anyway. I would say the best immediate value is sticking with 1700 and getting something like a 12600KF or 14600KF, both of which either cost cheaper or pretty much the same as a 9600X anyway, and you don't have to get a motherboard. Both of those will give you overclocking on top of additional cores, which definitely help with productivity. On the AMD side, you still got a couple of other options other than the 9600X. The 7600 is $12 cheaper than the 9600X, includes a cooler and pretty much matches it in multi-threaded workloads. The 7600X is an additional $5 cheaper on top of the $12, but it does lack a cooler, much like the 9600X. The 9600 non-X pretty much makes no sense at all. It's $90 extra than the X variant, all for just a cooler. Although there's some entry-level AM5 options that you should be aware of. The 7500F and 7400F are 40 to $50 cheaper, but they are AliExpress China exclusives. But those are savings that could easily fund your new AM5 board, especially if you resell your LGA 1700 board. So the trade-off is pretty much this. It's either you want the best value today with the 12600KF or 14600KF, or you want a future-proof platform with the 9600X plus AM5 with plenty of upgrade headroom. And gaming performance still holds up on the 12400F at 1080p. Even when using an RTX 4070, it's still very capable in 2025. High settings with no anti-aliasing and Age of Myth 3 told saw 32% higher averages with the 9600X. 1% lows were even less than that at just 25%. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 with the basic preset saw just 21% higher averages and 14% higher 1% lows on AMD. However, competitive titles like CS2 at the lowest settings with no anti-aliasing saw a huge swing with 58% higher averages and 38% higher 1% lows on Ryzen, clearly showing its effect in latency sensitive shooters like this one. However, in much more intense games like Doom the Dark Ages, even at the lowest settings with forced TAA showed only a 2% uplifts in averages in the 9600X, and pretty much no improvement to lows, showing how low performance improvements can get when GPU limited, even with a 4070. And Far Cry 6 at the high preset with no anti-aliasing, but with HD textures off, shows a pretty tangible 30% increase in averages, but just 16% higher 1% lows with AMD. Older titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider shows noticeable improvements on Ryzen by 33% in averages and 24% in 1% lows at the medium preset with no anti-aliasing. Thing. Lastly, another more GPU intense game like Assassin's Creed Shadows at the medium preset with Force TDA set to balance and the Force Ray Tracing set to hideout only saw just an 8% improvement on AMD with averages and a 9% improvement in 1% lows. And the 12400F still holds up relatively well. So across our 7 games of 1080p, the 9600X was 34% more performant overall. But again, given the 9600X is still 70% more expensive, the value doesn't exactly add up falling far behind in performance per dollar. However, those options that we mentioned earlier, like the 7600X and especially the 7500F and 7400F, given the similar performance, might prove to be a similar or even better value than the 12400F, especially in the case of that 7400F. Although yet again, similar to productivity, sticking with 1700 and upgrading to a 12600KF or 14600KF might end up being a better choice even still with gaming. This still some extra gaming performance to be had, especially with that 14600KF. In any case though, you would probably be better off just upgrading your GPU anyway. The 12400F can still easily stretch its legs, as we've seen, faring still quite well with even an RTX 4070. That said, if we tested at 720p, it would have highlighted more of a difference, revealing the hidden IPC and throughput efficiencies with that 9600X that games tend to hide due to being GPU intensive. And as games become less and less optimized as time goes by and become more and more reliant on the CPU, like the various Unreal Engine 5 games that we've seen recently, like the Borderlands 4, a CPU upgrade might become more and more relevant to push that same or more powerful GPU in the future. Quickly looking at power and temperatures, we ran Age of Myth retold yet again at 1080p, and the two chips consume similar power overall, with AMD only drawing 12% more, despite, as we saw in gaming, pulling ahead by 32% in average FPS. 
FPS, which really shows the sufficiency. However, I did find it to run quite a bit more hot, at over 20 degrees Celsius more. But taking a look at the Cinebench 10 minute throttle test results, it still showed that the 9600X maintained its sufficiency, with only a 26% increase in average power, for as we saw, 43% more performance. Again, the downside is that it gets quite a bit hot, running 33 degrees hotter on average versus Intel. It's not unbearably hot, but considering we're using a 140mm dual tower air cooler, it's definitely a little concerning. The Ryzen CPUs can comfortably operate at 95 degrees and still boost pretty well. So where does that leave us? Well, the iPhone 12400F still definitely holds up in 2025, especially at just over 100 bucks. Of course, the 9600X is faster, no doubt, about a third better on average, but it's also quite a bit more expensive. And once you factor in a new AM5 board, that value really starts to fall apart. Again, if you're on LJ1700 already, the smarter short-term move is just grabbing a 12600KF or 14600KF. You spend less overall, but you should really know your limits with the platform. If you're thinking long-term, then AM5 is the way to go. Even a cheaper Ryzen 7600 or 7400F will get most of the performance of the 9600X, and you have a real upgrade path further down the line. At the end of the day, it really just boils down to what matters more to you. Anyways guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like this video, get subscribed, hit that notification bell, and make sure to click this video on the screen right now.